So, you see, while I generally consider myself pretty smart, I'm also a Mets fan. It's my one true weakness. One that inspired me to come up with a three strike system when dealing with pups like you. If you get on my nerves once or twice, well, I understand. Not all of us perform well in stressful situations. But cross me three times and you're out. No excuses, no forgiveness, no mercy. As he's talking, he slowly approaches you, adding a bit of a theatrical swagger to his walk. Eventually, he leans in, deliberately invading your personal space. You realize it's a test. He's daring you to do something about it. Three strikes and you're out. Say, I understand, sir. Now. You've never been too eager to bend the knee to anyone. But this, this is something else. The man's very presence instills a primal fear in your heart. Fuck you, sir. With all due respect, sir, go fuck yourself. Strike one and watch the language whelp. Moving on, is there anyone you'd want to inform of your current situation? Tell them you're alright. He flashes his fangs briefly, and for some reason, the sight sends a chill down your spine. There is something very wrong about him. Someone close to you? Jessica, my ex-girlfriend. She kinda hates my guts, but yeah, I suppose it would be her. The stranger gives you a puzzled look and decides to prod further. The closest person in your life hates your guts. This time, something resembling a look of pity. He turns his eyes to the corpse in the floor. When it rains, it pours, I suppose. Well, if you'd like to ruin her day and let her know you're alright. Give me her phone number. I'll have someone take care of it. Discreetly, of course. You hand him your smartphone so he can copy the number from your list of contacts. Thank you. This will be useful in illustrating my next point. Instead of giving you back your phone, the man hides it in his pocket. From this point on, you are subject to different laws than the ones you grew up under, and you'll be watched by many eyes to ensure these laws are respected. You are forbidden from letting anyone know you're still alive. You are forbidden from showing your face anywhere they know you. If anyone comes looking for you, it's over for, for both you and them. He interrupts his monotone recitation and stares deep into your eyes. So, unless you want your girlfriend to end up at the bottom of the Hudson, I'd suggest you cooperate. He proudly displays his fangs again. You put Jess in danger, goddammit. I can only hope that you care for her enough not to do anything selfish. His words are meant to imply otherwise, but by now it's obvious he hates your guts as much as you hate his. He's itching for a fight and you're almost willing to oblige. Alright, I think that's enough lecturing for today. We're on a bit of a schedule here. Now I don't need to hurt you, but I can do so in the blink of an eye. 
just so that we're clear, I have the authority to end you right here, right now. This is not an idle threat. So are you going to play along or do we have to do it the hard way? You throw a punch, hoping to stagger him and run out of the room. He can see it coming a mile away. His hand shoots up and grabs you by the wrist. Damn, he's strong. You really shouldn't have done that. It was worth a shot, asshole. A dog as stupid as you deserves to be put down. You feel the bones in your wrist crack under the man's iron grip. You yelp in pain, feeling your arms snap like it was being crushed in a wise. He's not human, he's not human, he's not human, he's not human, he's not human! You know what? I don't care anymore. I count that as strike three. For a split second, it all becomes a blur. Suddenly, you feel a sharp pain in your chest. You realize you can't move a muscle. The man throws you over his shoulder like a sack of potatoes and carries you out of the room. You can only see snippets zoning in and out. No one stops the man as he carries your helpless body out of the building and throws it in the back of a black car. You drift out of consciousness everything goes dark again an endless void of nothingness an endless void of nothingness an endless void of nothingness suddenly a wet squelch like sound rings out in your ears then your chest explodes with an excruciating ache disembodied you find yourself being slowly entrapped by horrifying dead flesh. Then resurrection. You suck air through your teeth as you wake, hoping this was all a nightmare. The gasp doesn't bring you any comfort, and you quickly realize it's nothing more than a residual instinct. You don't actually breathe in, nor out, and your heart is as still as it was before. Sight comes back to you as you focus on the features of an unfamiliar room. No windows, just a simple bed, a single light bulb hanging from the ceiling, a small humming fridge, and a rattling AC fan in the wall. You notice claw marks on the inner side of the entrance door. Rise and shine, fledgling. You've got places to be. You're startled by the sound of the stranger's voice. There he is, standing in the doorway expectantly. His suit is as immaculate as yesterday, but his presence strikes you as even more malevolent than before. You remember the last thing you felt while looking at his face, the bones in your hand being crushed to an oozing pulp. You look at your fingers, but they're almost fully mended, with just a bit of bruising. Was your mind playing tricks on you? Screw you, asshole. Despite your previous misbehavior, I am offering you a handshake. Well, before you, before we leave, you will return it, either willingly or with your hand being torn off your body, your choice. The man glances at his watch and then turns his eyes to you again. You're expected. Get in the car. You have more questions? Where I'm taking you, you'll get the answers, probably more than you're ready to handle. You can still let me go. I promise I won't tell anyone about any of this. All right, you're free.
An awkward silence fills the room. A handful of seconds later, he breaks it. Yeah, not even you could be dumb enough to think it would work. I'm struggling to come up with a single instance in the history of our whole wide world that this line actually brought the desired results. You're just testing me, aren't you? Enough is enough. Are you getting inside the car? Or are you really, really, really willing to risk a fourth strike in this match? This better be not some bullshit. Quit your yapping and get in the car. As you sit down in the back, the doors locking behind you, you notice that your clothing is wrapped around your sternum. You touch your chest. You realize there's a gaping hole there. You can feel your broken ribs and the flesh around them. What the fuck is this hole in my chest? A potent reminder that you should listen to your superiors. Anyway...